Hey, Mike, it's such a pleasure to have you on Voice of a Lion. And now you, for you, this has got to be small time. You commanded entire fleet, the third fleet. Right. So you were an admiral with the United States Navy. By the way, I was born on Woodby Island, Washington. <laughs> okay. So you kind of know where that is, I'm sure. Yes, yes. And uh, a mutual friend has connected us. And the more I research you, the more that we absolutely love the fact that you're coming on Voice of Alliance. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> You know, and uh, we're going to do this a little different, and I think our listeners kind of know how we go about this, because not, you were a fighter, fighter pilot where you got the nickname Wizard right. um, because you were so good at it, and that's the truth. Um, no. And, <laughs> that, yeah, and everyone told me you're humble, so we're going to do a little bragging ourselves. No, no, that's, not, that's actually not the truth. Well, tell me what the truth is. Let's go start there, and then I'm going to brag some more. And the stuff I have no idea what I'm talking about. Well, obviously. actually, this is you're, you're going to have your first news flash. Uh, I was very junior, got kind of rushed into uh, combat uh, when I was very young, and uh, much younger than the other people in the squadron, and uh, did very well. And uh, I was a distance runner in college, and I was bounding around the flight deck one day, and one of the vets said, you know, he's running around North Vietnam and he can't get hit, and he's bouncing around here. It looks like a deer. I think we're going to call you Bambi. <laughs> oh. Uh, <Logan>. oh. <laughs> so, uh, so after that deployment in the Phantom, the F-4, I got picked to be the junior guy in the first F-14 squadron, it was very senior and we were in a totally different hangar and uh, developing the airplane. And I did a few interesting and, and good things. And, uh, uh, and so uh, they started calling me wizard, but added a second Z. You, you never get a wizard. It's wizard. And, uh, and so that kind of stuck in that community. And by the time the call sign police, my first squadron found out about it, it was already ingrained. And so I'm one of the few people that lucked out and got a switch from a kind of an average call sign to uh, one that's uh, more acceptable. But usually yeah. that doesn't ever happen. Well, and our listeners need to know that you actually, and I'm not, is, is the word commanded um, the top yeah. gun? And now it's called something else. What no, is Navy, the actual name of Navy, the top gun? Navy, Navy Fighter Weapons School. There and you go. Uh, and I was the executive officer, and uh, which is uh, the number two, two, two gent there, the commanding officer, then executive officer. Yeah, uh, so for all the humbleness that he's feeding us over this, <laughs> you don't get put in charge of Top Gun unless you're the man. So uh, well, you if, you, if you stay around long enough, you gradually move up. Uh, I don't that think That ain't so. true. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the thing that, that I am proud of is that uh, – I got to work with exceptional people and my view of leadership is you rise on the shoulders of the people that are working for you. And I believe kind of in an inverted uh, leadership pyramid that you're helping the people that are doing the work uh, do the work. And, and so, you know, I've had fabulous teams of people working for me. The thing that I am proud of is that in the five uh, military commands I had and in the airline that I ran, we didn't lose anybody operationally. Uh, and, uh, that was a, that was a big thing to me with your research. You know, that my father was a World War II fighter pilot and then he got killed, uh, early jet pilot going to the Korean war and such. And, uh, and so in my first squadron, we lost 25% uh, and I've lost three roommates, my son's godfather. So when I got into command, I wanted to be excellent, but I also wanted to not uh, lose people. And I believe you can do both. I believe you can achieve excellence without burning your people out. You know, and you, the loss of your father, how did that affect you? And how you were, you were in college at that time, were you not? No, I was only just short of my fifth birthday. And uh, oh, it, when I read it, it kind of put it together. So I was confused. Yeah. That's where, they got the, that's where they got the idea for uh, Cruz's dad in the Top Gun movie, the, the writer, Jack Epps came down and we, we, uh, we, he did a bunch of interviews and, uh, talked to people and he took little bits of everybody's story and weaved it together. Um, and so, no, I was a shy, 
uh, introverted, uh, really insecure back of the room kind of kid growing up. In fact, uh, went second grade through college with one gent and a four year college roommate. And they would tell you if they were talking to you right now, at no time did they, I, that I knew them, did I exhibit any leadership ability whatsoever. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't either. Number one. No. Number two is I think you're doing okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so uh, so the fighter thing, I, I'd read every fighter bi biography I could, uh, and so when I was growing up, I got in trouble with the nuns in the fifth grade for reading God as my co-pilot, uh, and uh, they, they called up my mom when she checked the book out. It had nothing to do with God, and uh, and uh, and she said, my mom said, that's all I can get him to read, and so ironically, the Lord blessed me in that I got to meet a lot of these World War II uh, American, British, and even German uh, big aces. And so it kind of, I'd psychologically prepared myself for this because uh, the air-to-air -air combat hasn't changed from World War I, the equipment has, but the nature of it and psycho psychologically it hasn't changed since mm -hmm. World War I. So I was uh, prepared. Yeah, so going from commanding a fleet and commanding Top Gun to uh I want to call it motivational speaking, but you do so much more than that, right? Um, yeah, yeah. We were talking I, I, earlier. You actually go into a company and start at the top and mold it on from the top down. Can you explain a little bit of that? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not so much a motivational speaker as kind of a leadership consultant. Uh, you know, if they a uh, couple of companies I'm working with now, new leaders have taken over. One of them's a Fortune under the fortune 100 thing it's taken over part of it and another one's uh, trying to do something and uh uh and so if we have a similar philosophy uh of leadership and approach to leadership which we can talk about if you're interested um and and we both feel it's going to be a worth worth their time and my time then i invest in learning them a little bit and then I help them not with a different message but it's a lot of times just uh, you know like playing the piano they're playing the white keys and I come in and hit the black ones just to give them a different tonality and and it's the same basic approach but I relate my stories to them and other things that I've learned about this because I studied the fighter business and then because I was not a confident leader going in I really studied leadership and watched and learned and and wrote down stuff and still do. There's a lot of, you would think that there is uh, not a lot of this going on, but we found that there are in a variety of different industries. Uh, there's companies that, 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 that are doing what I think is the right thing and, uh, and, and they're doing quite well, but it's not the standard leadership style. There was a, these two Stanford professors studied Silicon Valley startups for 10 years and they found there were like five main leadership styles and four of the five I don't really relate to. I relate to the commitment model where the leaders as committed to the people working for them and the customers as they are the profit. The profit and shareholder value is an outcome of doing the right things and, 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 and creating a safe environment, a lot of training, everybody's pulling in the same direction, those kinds of things. Uh, you know, it, the number has to be reached. You got to be growing. You got to be getting better. But uh, it's not just all about show me the bottom line. And I found a lot of companies have all the things written down. Uh, they've got all the, 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 the either published or on the wall and everything else. The question is, do you live what you're saying? And, mm -hmm. and I found quite a lot of them uh, speak it, but they don't right. live it, you know. Well, and this isn't your first time. I heard a rumor, and so here's an, here again, we're going to find out if it's true, that this isn't your first time dealing with people who were very, very successful in business. I, I was told that the, a, a particular uh, shoemaker used to fly out and actually spend time with you on your carrier. Is that true? Uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not exactly true. There's a particular... <laughs> particular uh, shoe shoemaker that I met many, many years ago. It turns out that when I went to college, I, my mentor was a, a great Oregon uh, miler who just passed away a couple weeks ago uh, mm -hmm. in his 80s American record holder in the mile Olympian. And, uh, and he took me under his wing and his college teammate 
back then when I was in college was in the process of starting a shoe company you may have heard of Nike uh, yeah. from, oh, yeah. and, uh, and so I've known him and his wife uh, the whole time and I can't say enough good things about him and I would would pitch his book shoe dog for anybody that hasn't read it it's a very honest book and it's amazing to see somebody like them both of them that that have started that from a very difficult challenging period of time and now they're worth billions and they haven't changed uh at all they're still wonderful people so uh you know that it's been fun to see see that develop over time that's kind of a that's kind of just a neat connection yeah yes. that was early in your life so yes college you get to uh, watch them grow and learn from them and obviously yeah. they're one of the main market i don't think anyone in the world's not heard of nike yeah, and it's a great leadership book, and there's pieces in there that I, I totally align with, and uh, and I tell people honestly, I'm not trying to monetize this. You you're free to use anything I tell you, uh, you know. And it's uh, if the leaders get it, I believe in teaching the top, and then they take it down, and they have, everybody's got to have their own style and their own approach. But there's certain themes or principles that kind of the successful uh, people. Uh, run through the organization and you can you can see that and when i find that then i get excited about spending time with them well how much fun hey so let me just see i had a couple questions i wanted to wanted to see oh you I, it. I have one really just listening to you because as you know clay and i we have 10 kids five of our kids are 18 and over grown we have grandchildren now um but as i'm listening to you i i, I just want to pick your brain because we always tell our kids, um, if you're not leading, you're following. So, we, you know, and that's something that we've always tried to cultivate in our children is that they need to be leaders. And that doesn't mean that you need to, you know, tell people what to do. It just simply means that you need to be the one setting the pace, basically. So, you know, as I'm listening to you and you lost your father when you were not even five years old, I'm, where, where does this come from? Where do you, where do you think this drive has come from? Because you because you're very humble and I love it and but I I I gotta know I gotta know where this comes from. <laughs> um. Well, you know it it, it it's it, it's a it's, it's a different thing. It, it you know Top Gun changed my exposure to it, changed my life and career arc. Uh, uh, the 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 technical advisor to the Top Gun movie as another friend of mine, uh, a great friend, and he literally took me under his wing. We shot down Migs together, um, Godfather to uh, his kids, and uh, and and he was one of the, the, the early, early founding kind of Top Gun guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that approach, uh, and then I got to be there later, and, 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 and that approach, and the Top Gun approach, is not, you're correct in terms of be a leader, not a follower, but the Top Gun approach is kind of what I like to look for, which is uh -huh. it's not the leader. It's right. not, it's the culture that's created and the culture is standard of performance. And uh -huh. I'm a, a hand on the shoulder, a standard of performance kind of person. I, I, right? You're not meeting the standard. You need coaching, teaching, uh, mentoring. Now you may have to, if it repeats, or it's not a good fit, you may have to have a short but exciting conversation. And I'm all about improving the breed. So don't think that I'm I'm not a grinder because that's my kid's name for me is the grinder. Uh, and, right. and while you see me as positive, to be truthful, my wife's nickname for me is not Wizard, it's Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Oh, no. So I have to work on staying positive uh, i love it <laughs> I, I tend to be skeptical and, and look at the glass half empty uh, uh, we call you know. clay peter pan <laughs> so see you, you to, they, they know the real air started story. setting in peter pan is like <laughs> what's going on yeah so see i'm now we're balancing this out from all your you know yes <laughs> and uh so standard performance and uh um you know, I, what I say to the kids is you, you're either growing and going forward or you're going to fall back. You can't, you can't stay the same and, uh, stability, security, uh, those kinds of things, they're illusionary, they're deceptive, mm -hmm. they're unattainable really. And the only, only way you can 
can protect yourself is to keep growing and and uh so it's 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 pushing that and uh yeah. uh and while you now create the public thinking i'm this world class <laughs> i've had my ups and downs and i've had i would love some do overs and uh and go back and uh, you know and as i've learned things over time i'm still learning things uh, uh over time so so in terms of the kids we let them be themselves our kids are all four we have four kids and mm -hmm. uh, they're all totally different and uh, pursuing different lines and and they i just think they need to get into something that they're passionate about yeah. and and that, that that really compels them and uh and they got to be outside themselves and trying to give back in some ways. Uh, and that's why I said to you before we got on, went live about, I'm, I'm really in the pay it forward mode yeah. uh, because uh, they realize I shouldn't be here. I mean, I survived uh, flying in fighters, uh, you know, tremendous amount of combat. And then 9-11, the plane crashed right underneath me in the Pentagon, took out the three floors underneath us. And we were all got out of there without any, any injuries of, of significance. We had some people hurt, uh, but they were able to walk to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then then I survived uh, cancer about mm -hmm. eight years ago. Uh, okay. They, uh, they, the doctors even considered that a straight up act of God miracle that mm -hmm. I uh, managed to survive based on what I had going on. So, so, you know, that's kind of it. It's the, but you're, you, you're leading. Some people want to lead because they want to be in charge. I think right. leading is a responsibility to help the people around you make, reach their optimum performance. And uh, yeah. that's what impressed me about Top Gun. Top Gun's very, very competitive, uh, uh, very competitive, it, but it's iron sharpening iron. And so right. when you go out, you, you're going full gas, but then you come back, it's all about everybody trying to improve and uh, right. so it's not it's not corporate cutthroat win lose competition i call it collaborative co collaborative competition mm -hmm. you're trying to help everybody else get better and uh and and that that's that's kind of you know you can you can be trying to be your best you can have great individual success that doesn't prevent you from having great team success i think they're not mutually exclusive and a lot of people uh you know try to can motivate themselves by making uh, the competition their enemy, uh, yeah. you know, negative motivation. That's it's funny that you said that because I was thinking just the other day we went on a hike, like a five mile hike out in the middle of the Hemis Mountains. And my 13 year old son was leading everyone. There were like 16 of us. And Clay was taking up rear because he was pack muling grandbabies. He had a grandbaby on front, grandbaby on his shoulders. And our 10-year-old son was having a difficult time following the 13-year-old. He kept, you know, critiquing his leadership style. You're walking too far ahead. You're... So Clay pulled the 10-year-old and basically said, technically, I'm leading. But I'm having Levi because he's better equipped right now to do the leading. So, you know, it, just being able to create this, we're not competing with each other. This is, he's more equipped right now to lead the pack than I am because I'm helping with the younger, you know, the younger kids. And it was, it taught me a lot about being able to surrender at times that leadership to someone who is better equipped than you are and being able to learn from that leader. So that's kind of funny because that just happened two days ago. <laughs> yeah. We're still sore. Yes, I am. <laughs> Chiropractor today. <laughs> hey, so let, let me just go here. So you, you're shooting down me right? Um, you're in charge of Top Gun. You're at the Pentagon, which they, they don't put dummies there, right? And you've survived life <laughs> and death situations, right? I'm going to call them lucky. <laughs> right? But, let, but let's talk real. And then, and then obviously we have a real life. So speaking to a regular listener, mm -hmm. you know, because one thing I get from you is um, the, the human side of who you are is probably where we want to go the deepest on because right. we're living in times regardless of where you're at politically and regardless of yeah. what you feel you should or shouldn't wear a mask we're living in pretty strenuous times and we have very common folks that are struggling yeah. and it's nice to hear from uh, a true american hero regardless if you consider yourself one or not 
<laughs> it's the truth. No. But but you struggled, and uh, I find the human side. I think when we peel back the veneer of all of our uh, American heroes, the human side is what people need to know. And um, uh, we all feel depressed at times, and we all feel scared, and we all feel inadequate, and we all and you can go on and on and on. And people need to know that it's okay. And I just want you to speak to that from from what I consider an American hero, but also you're just a man. And uh, talk to us about that. Okay, so so let's <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna be a long-winded, multifaceted answer. Uh, Ready. First, uh, first uh, the Pentagon. Uh, I ended up being the, the the head of naval aviation in D.C. That means you get a budget that's the third of the Navy's budget, thirty-two billion dollars a year. Uh, I was a history major jock. Okay, uh, and now I'm in charge of. Uh, basically $96 billion, uh, you know, executing one year, defending another one and planning another budget. My wife meets the head of the Navy and he asks her, what do you think of his new job? And she says, straight up, exact words, I don't trust him with a family checkbook. You're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So you got to know your strengths and your weaknesses. And I had great Money people, I had great people helping me. We did some great things, but, but uh, so that that's that's that. So don't I give like me your wife. Don't give me too much credit. <laughs> then pull off this American hero. There's a tremendous amount of American heroes that don't get a lot of credit. Like let's take uh, since we just left June and Omaha Beach and D Day and all those things. And you look in the history books. And you look in the Army history, and you look at Omaha Beach and. Uh, the first two companies got slaughtered. The first company, Company A of this particular group, ended up with three riflemen on the beach uh, that got in successfully. The second one, Company B, equally tremendous loss. Uh, and this one second lieutenant, Walter Johnson, takes his 20 guys, loses a couple, gets up, captures the town of Verville, which is where Private Ryan was going, and he proceeds on through the rest of the day and by the end of the day he's a half mile ahead of the whole u.s army okay with his guys just going for it okay you will have great difficulty finding his name anywhere they recognize colonel johnson and all these other generals and doing all this other stuff that are out front but there's a tremendous amount of real heroes that don't get a lot of recognition okay like in the fighter world this uh, one navy fighter Jimmy Thatch developed because the initial airplanes in World War II, the Wildcat was inferior to the Japanese Zero. And he developed a Thatch Weave where he used two planes to fight against one. And it's called the Thatch Weave. And we still use some of that to this day. But you won't see a lot of acclaim and not a lot known about him and everything else. And so you got to be careful with that hero term because heroes are recognized because of certain things. Okay. So, so I'm pretty we, careful and I'm still going to lay them. Well, we got, we got by that. Go ahead. Right. So, Is so, uh, you know, and so, uh, um, uh, so we get around to, uh, to, uh, focusing on your, your, your question and what, what can go to the, 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 the standard person out there. Uh, I've met a lot of famous people, presidents, three of them, uh, famous movie actors and directors and Hall of Fame coaches. And I, I like to meet the coaches and those kind of people to, you know, uh, try to take things from them and, uh, you know, and famous athletes and, and things like that. And a lot of people that the public really gives great acclaim to. Okay. My conclusion is they're very talented down this degrees. Mm. Outside of that, they know they're just regular people and they know they're not, we, 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 we accrue to them talent. They don't think they have, and they don't recognize that. So first of all, a lot of the public thinks that these people that they see a lot of are superhuman and they know they're not the, the, the good ones know that they're, uh, you got super egos going on in any field and, and, uh, and like that. So they're just regular people trying to face a uniquely challenging period of time. 
you, in my view, you've got five card, uh, five card challenge poker going on. You've got potentially, you've got the, the COVID-19, you've got the economy, you've got racial uh, challenges right now. Uh, you've got the election coming up and you've got China, which is a very big question. Is that going to go militarily? Is it going to go economic? How's that going to go? So uh, it, there's a lot of unknown unknowns right now in the world. And, and a lot of people are looking for certainty and something to hold on to. And, and uh, I think there's a lot of mental problems, a lot of, uh, you know, other kinds of problems people are having that are not getting any visibility with everything focused on what's going on. So, um, you know, uh, I think, frankly, since you opened this up, the solution is going to be, we can't, we can't go from extremes. The solution's in the middle and you're going to, and it's not pulling down statues, it's changing the heart. And uh, so those are all just symbols and really don't mean anything. And the harder one side pushes, the harder the other side pushes away. And we've got to get back to uh, uh, ag agreeing that we can disagree and not being disagreeable and being able to discuss things. Because in my view, we have uh, freedom of speech, which means though I might not like it and I might really oppose it, you have the right to say pretty much anything in this country. And uh, so I think tolerance across the board is the first step. And, uh, and since we're talking about leadership uh, a little bit, the next least trusted thing in the recent studies by Pew and uh, Gallup behind politicians is business leaders. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I talk a lot about is how do you engender trust in your company and the people, because a good percentage of them probably don't trust you. And so that's the first thing you've got to create a safe environment uh, that people feel they can communicate openly, that, that uh, you've got their back as a leader and, you know, and you're not just interested in yourself and your career and profit, you're interested in them. And so, you know, uh, uh, it's a very, very challenging period of time, particularly now since people are leading companies via Zoom or, or Teams or WebEx or whatever, you know, electronic means they're leading them, but they're not, there's no physical contact. So it's going to be even more challenging uh, going forward. That's a long-winded, diverse that answer. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, you had brought up something earlier. Biggest regret that you would change? Um, all right, well, well, back to your, your Michelle, your children. Uh, belief okay uh y you know uh, a lot of a lot of people don't go for it because they don't believe even if they're prepared there's fear and a lot mm -hmm. of times to me fear is false expectations appearing real you mm -hmm. think about things that are in front of you and 80 90 percent of the time it never turns out to be like you thought maybe five percent of the time not as bad and maybe you needed that fear only a few percentage points at the time but we have Stone Age software, so we immediately conjure up all this Eeyore kind of stuff. Oh my goodness! And uh, coming up, and so you got to get over that. And so one of the big regrets relates back to college and running. I ran well, but when you have a guy that's a world class, you know, American record holder, telling you there's more in the tank, you could you could run faster, uh, and you're telling him, no, 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 I'm there. I'm I'm at a hundred percent. Uh, and then later you get into fighters and you find out what concentration <laughs> really is and what focus really is and, and taking it to the next level, which is what Top Gun's all about. Uh, uh, you realize that, uh, that, that there was more there. So I wish I could go back to my college body, uh, you know, with my fighter brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, so and then we need to talk about Top Gun and their approach because that relates to that. But, but then the other biggest regrets is as I got to be more senior with bigger commands and bigger responsibilities, you know, I'd been doing this so long that the nerve endings got close to the surface. And so I was much more uh, the leader I talk about earlier than the leader at the end, although we got some great things accomplished. 
uh, you know, and, and I've talked to people that have been in those reins of terror when <laughs> at the end and they say, no, my perception is not accurate, but, but you, 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 you're always going to have those regrets. You're always going to have failure. It's part of it. That's why I like the safe environment where you can communicate and, and, uh, you know, mistakes, uh, an error is not a mistake unless you don't correct it or address it. It, it, it it's repetitive over time. And, and you can't, you can't not have uh, errors and mistakes. People are going to make mistakes. We're not perfect. I mean, the only person that hasn't made a mistake is a dead person, you know? And so, uh, so you got that going on. So, you know, it's, it's those, those two things. And I, I have great affection for a lot of people and love them and think about them. I'm not good at uh, staying in touch. Okay. I'm generally <laughs> focused on headed this way. I don't look back much and I'm, I'm kind of, you know, headed we, out. We're, we're new at the whole zoom thing. And I know that we may have a time restraint on ours. We don't have to yep. set it up longer. <laughs> so I, if something happens, but I want to do this too. If you had to speak to the entire world, everybody, from the rich of the rich to the poor of the poor and give them just your nuggets of truth. If you could speak to everyone right now, what would you say to them? I would say everybody really, when you break it down is after the same thing. Uh, they want security. They want their family. They want to, they want peace. Uh, most of the people in the world, not all, but, but most of the people. And, uh, we're not as different as you would think. And, uh, you know, I really discovered that with these World War II aces, German, American, British, fought each other hard. They all became friends after the war. And they had more in common with themselves, with each other, than they did with the rest of humanity because fighter people are weird. And, uh, and, and so really, uh, you know, conflict and war, been in a huge amount of them, doesn't really accomplish anything. You could, you could, you could, uh, correct a lot of these people people would just have understanding and talk and and try to reach common ground and uh you know uh you know so i would say just tell everybody to chill would be my my, my word that is good hey so we're going to keep talking until it blinks because i have no idea and i just don't want to let you go um hey so you're married your wife was a teacher is that right Yes, much better at what she did than I did. She was a ma master's in gifted and talented and special education taught from college to kindergarten and uh, wow. way more, way more accomplished. And, uh, and uh, if, if you met us, you'd say, oh, no, no, no. If you met us, you'd say, yep, that's accurate. <laughs> yes, I was a special ed. I was in special ed most of my younger years. Uh, I have dyslexia and, you know, I'm at the age where that wasn't truly identified well. Right. And it wasn't until I actually went in the military that I truly excelled and exceeded because it was what I was good at. And I didn't rely necessarily on having to stand up in the middle of class and read. So uh, uh, people like your wife are heroes to me as well because right. it, it for a good teacher, a good teacher pours into her students and, uh, empowers them instead of breaks them down yes yeah yeah and, and, and i would say to you the other thing is the heroes in my life the lord blessed me by putting angels in my life that were my mentors because my mom never remarried and so i had mm -hmm. several people help me along the way and and uh, those people that can help somebody in my situation are real heroes even though they may not get uh, the claim and recognition you know so name some of them. Let's go. Give them some well, credit. What did they do for you? Well, it started with my cousin who was older than I am, uh, uh, Bob Bishop. And he uh, he was a great athlete. And then he went on to be a vice president of AT&T when it was Big Ma Bell. Uh, yeah. So it was kind of like, wow, you know, no horizon kind of thing. Uh, my coach, Jim Grella, you know, Pete Pettigrew, who was a guy that, that, that I talked about, the Top Gun guy, and he was probably, I mean, he was, I say it in the, the Reels documentary on Top Gun, he was the best combination of fighter pilot teacher that the school's ever produced. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is the other message I was going to tell you about Top Gun. Top Gun got started because the Navy was doing 25% as well as it had done, and the Air Force as well, 
as they'd done in World War II in Korea with the same people, same weapons, just changing the approach, changing the teaching, changing to a standard performance, valuing everybody, changing the conversation called the debrief, and really looking at things objectively with the same people the Navy went back after a four-year bombing halt in North Vietnam and improved by 400% to better than World War II in Korea. The Air Force trying to fix it with just technology alone stayed at the same 25% level. And so the whole world, including the Russians and everybody else, adopted the Top Gun approach. Uh, and the, the, the Army did, the SEALs did, the Blue Angels do. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an approach. And you see that coming in sports more and in business. Uh, like I said, the companies that are willing to, to, to do that, it's different, but uh, been very successful in the outside. And, and in fact, the Mercedes Formula One team, which has won six championships in a row, if you heard their leader, Toto Wolf, talk or read any articles about him, it'd be just like talking to me. It's the same approach. And so you can be, have that approach and be world-class and sustain excellence. Uh, hey, how do people reach you? So I'm a, I'm a company owner and I want to get you to come speak. Um, okay. So we're just getting started. Don't have a website. My email address, uh, Mike McCabe, all, all, all one word at wizardmccabe.com. Okay. Excellent. So uh, we are going to hit a pause here. What a privilege to have you on. And uh, thank you for all that you do and all that you're going to do. Well, see, yeah, but my problem is you never talk about yourselves and you never talk about all the things you're doing and all the stuff that I researched about you. So back on you there, Michelle. Thank you. Play. Don't go nowhere.